Hello everyone, my name is Kari Jaskilainen. I'm the president and founder of Helbus Healthy School of Business. I have here today one of our visiting professors, Finn Meilenkorn, who is teaching management and operations with us today. So, Finn, can you tell a little bit about your background? Absolutely. Uh, I have a, a doctorate degree from the International School of Management, yes. where I studied in Paris, New York, Tokyo, and Shanghai. Okay. Uh, and I wrote my doctoral dissertation on how to create competitive advantages from cultural diversity. And I also have uh, an MBA from Hennessy Management College in the UK, where I was writing about global motivation and reward systems. And since 2001, I have been running my own, own consulting company, where we have helped more than 600 companies around the world uh, dealing with cultural diversity. Uh, and then about 10 years ago, I found out that uh, I wanted to give something back to the next generation and the best way to do that uh, is to start teaching at business schools and universities around the world. Uh, and I thought uh, I had a, a pretty good background for being able to combine um, academia and, and practical experiences because we have worked with so many companies. Okay, that's really an interesting and diverse background. Uh, can you tell what, what was the key um, finding of your uh, doctoral dissertation? What, what was the most important thing that you found out? The most important thing we, we found out, uh, I had a number of students helping me doing the, the, the research because it was quite comprehen comprehensive research, was that uh, diversified teams, all kinds of diversification, uh, but I was focusing on cultural diversification, uh, were much more effective and much more innovative than monocultural teams. Uh, so we, we looked at a lot of, of companies, and we particularly looked at, at companies in the pharmaceutical sector where, where the innovation power and the speed of innovation is, is very important for these companies to, to actually succeed. Uh, and we could see when we compared the different companies and compared the different teams, that these teams where uh, they had a high degree of diversity, it could be men, women, it could be age groups, it could be different cultures, it could be different educational backgrounds, uh, different cultural backgrounds, that when you have a high degree of diversity, that they were just much more innovative and they were much more uh, ready to change direction and had much more input in the decision process and the innovation process than, than other teams. And today, Innovation is everything. Those companies and organizations who have the highest level of innovation, they are the ones who are going to win the race. Okay, that's very interesting. I think very relevant to our too. too. Um, is your current business in your company, is it based on the uh, find, somehow based on, on this uh, finding and this assumption that you have made? Yes, it, it is. Uh, that's what we do, and that has been transformed into service offerings that, that we are delivering to our clients around the world. Uh, we help them develop uh, corporate cultures that support the strategy. We develop leaders that learn to embrace cultural diversity, and we facilitate a number of mergers and acquisitions on the integration side, so that we don't end up in, in cultural conflicts that, that leads to that the merger and acquisition in, uh, is becoming a, a, a very bad idea. Because today it is the fact that two-thirds of all merchant acquisitions, they never meet their original objectives due to cultural clashes. And we are committed to, to bring down that, that ratio uh, with the client that we are working with. So when I formed the company in 2001, after having worked with, with companies like IBM, Computer Sciences Corporation, and Arthur Anderson Business Consulting for many years all over the world, was that we wanted three pillars to stand on, a consulting part, a training part, and a research part. So we actually carry out a lot of research in our yeah. company, both together with clients and together with uh, educational institutions around the world. How do you today use that research? Is it published in, in scientific journals, or is it uh, used in-house in, in the consulting tasks, or how do you actually use the right research? Uh, I have published two books. Uh, about these subjects, um, which you can find on Amazon and all the other online bookstores. Uh, but the thing is that most of the research that is funded by companies, uh, they don't want that research to be public. 
So very often we conduct research where we put different companies together from different industries in clusters, but where they have the same challenges that they want to, to research. Because this way they can share knowledge internally, which they can't do if they are competitors. And they hire us to find out what do we need to research, we carry out the research, uh, we work with the research results, we verify them, and turn them into things that they can actually use internally in, in these companies who participate in these research projects. But they don't want to publish it to, to a broader audience because they consider it very proprietary. Yes, yes. That, that must be really valuable for the companies. Um, now you are teaching here this course of management and operations. Could you briefly like uh, describe what's the key takeaway for the student in this course? What, what what is the most important thing he or she learns? Uh, I'm actually trying to teach them not to be afraid of life. Okay. Uh, and trying to make them understand that there's much more to a successful life than getting good grades. Yeah. Uh, that it's mo more about their personality yes. than it is about the, the, the factual skills that they can learn. Because Everybody can learn a skill, but, but not everybody can learn to be a good person with a high level of integrity. Okay. And at the end of the day, when, when we're looking for successful leaders and, leader, and people who have the potential to become successful leaders, it's much more the, the personal skills than, than it is the, the, the factual skills that they have, because they can learn that any time. Yes. Uh, so I'm trying to, to, to teach them uh, to develop how they can develop themselves uh, as leaders and managers and how they can uh, feel confidence in, in, in excelling in a world that is changing more rapidly than ever before in history because these are the options that they are up against. We have artificial intelligence in the form of the most known one is IBM Watson uh, where we already know by now that, that uh, it can take over the job of most of the uh, law graduate from the universities because it, it assesses cases much more effectively and much better than they do. So what are they going to do when they graduate? Uh, we know a lot about artificial intelligence that can take out a lot of other jobs. So a lot of uh, jobs are going to disappear in the, the next decade. I think I read the number uh, in, in the United States alone, it was around 700,000 jobs that are going to disappear because of artificial intelligence. So I think it's very relevant that the students today, they ask themselves the question, what am I going to do? Uh, and that's why I'm trying to teach them the skills that are generic, that help them uh, develop themselves and succeeding in a world that, that is just changing so rapidly. Yeah, this is very interesting. I feel that uh, artificial intelligence, it's, it's, it's uh, at the same time, it's a little bit of a threat, but also it will open lots of opportunities. Yeah, it is. And, and, and it's, it's a really exciting thing. Uh, I know you teach a lot of entrepreneurship also, and uh, yes. uh, what advice would you give to a student who is thinking about becoming an entrepreneur? Just go for it. Yeah. Because what's the worst thing that can happen? Uh, I left Hope Life in 2001, uh, a very comfortable corporate life position, say with a lot of money, a lot of prestige, a lot of safety, but I, I quit anyway. Um, and I actually quit because I thought one day they're going to find out that I'm not worth all these money. I earned a lot of money and I didn't think I worked that much actually. And I said, one day they're going to find out. Uh, so I better quit now. Um, and I was dissatisfied with um, the integrity of the company I worked with at that time, IBM. Uh, and I was dissatisfied with, there was so much focus on doing things right instead of doing the right things. Okay, yeah. And I was frustrated over having had so many ideas that I couldn't pursue because I didn't have time. Because I was working more than full time in, in that position. So from one day to another I decided to quit and go from having a very high salary to having absolutely nothing um, and start up my own company. And now that has been 
for 16, almost 17 years or so. And there have been ups and downs and most ups, but I would never trade it in for a, a corporate position again. And I have started up a number of other companies start, uh, that I just do it all the time. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, and when I talked to the students in my class here about how many of them would like to start our own companies, it was actually very few. Uh, and that disappoints me a bit. Uh, and it's not only here, it's, it's actually everywhere that the young generation, that they are, they are more focused on, on getting a job than actually take the chance and follow their dreams. And uh, I think that's kind of a pity. Yes, in what sense? That they have a responsibility for take uh, their country forward to the next generation and they can only do that by taking chances. Yes. And it's not fair that, that, that it's my generation uh, who should take all the chances all the time. They are the ones who are having the responsibility now. They don't have any personal responsibilities. None of them in this class have kids, have families or anything else. So, so they are free to go for the dreams. Yes, that, that's true. I think this is a good time to, to start because you don't have uh, people who are so, many, so much dependent on yourself. Uh, on the other hand, maybe somebody might argue that you also need experience to start a company, so, so being young is, is, is not necessarily the only advantage. But, uh, but I agree that uh, uh, I, I studied entrepreneurship in, in, in university and uh, that has been really one of the best choices of my life. I mm -hmm. really, really like, like being an entrepreneur. Uh, finally, I would like to ask one question. That, uh, what advice would you give to an entrepreneur who is going through hard times currently? Is there any advice you want to give? Yeah, I've been there many times myself. <laughs> many, actually. Uh, but uh, the compensation is that when you succeed with something, uh, and you can really see that wow, it takes off. You know it's because of you. It's not because you're employed by a company who, who did something. Uh, it's because you made the difference. And that feeling of succeeding uh, easily compensates from, from the downturns you have. And when you have the downturns, that, that's where you learn. You never learn on the way up. So the more often you, 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 you feel that, that things are going down, the more learning opportunities you have. And the most important thing here is actually is to surround yourself with the right people. If you only surround yourself with with people who have their their safe core jobs, and you are in a tough time as an entrepreneur, uh, many of them will say, "Why don't you get a job? Uh, why don't you get a proper job?" And so I said, "So it would go wrong." Uh, and it, it's not really what you need to hear when you're in a tough time. You, you need to be together with people who have been in even worse times, uh, who have suffered even more than you have. And if you compare yourself to them and ask advice for them, what should I do? Then you get some advice that you can use for something. And next time, you have learned a lot and you will not end up with that situation again. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a very good point, actually. A couple of good points. One is that you actually learn from the hardships, and the other one is that um, I think the steel billionaire Andrew Carnegie had the principle that try to surround yourself with people who are more intelligent than you are. Mm -hmm. So that, that's the way you learn. Okay, Tim, thank you very much for this. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you.